and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on abdominal examination in children. So ideally, examine the child in a supine and relaxed position with their arms held loosely at the side and their head and neck supported by a pillow underneath. On general inspection, look at the general appearance of the child. Do they look unwell? Is the child in pain? Check the growth and nutritional status by plotting the height and weight on the growth chart as indicated according to the age. Look for any dysmorphic features because this is abdominal examination. We should look for features such as thalassemic feces, faces because one of the causes of any hepatosplenomegaly could be thalassemia. Look for skin pigmentation, bruises or rashes. Is there any jaundice? Assess the hydration status and also look for bedside props such as any nasogastric tube or central line for total parenteral nutrition, TPN. Next, we check the hands and the face. So for the hands, look for finger clubbing, coilonychia, leukonychia, any palma erythema or palma pallor by comparing with our hands. At the eyes, look for any pallor of the conjunctiva and any jaundice, yellowish discoloration of the sclera. Check the oral cavity, any ulcers, any angular stomatitis, and also, is there any fitter? So next, we proceed to the abdominal examination. Adequate exposure from the cephis sternum of the child to the level of the symphysis pubis. First, we inspect the abdomen, so on inspection, look at the abdominal contour and the symmetry. We can say it is the abdominal the abdomen is protuberant or distended or scaphoid in shape. Any scars? Look at the front and the back of the abdomen because remember any renal biopsy scar is at the back. Look for skin lesions, rashes, pigmentation or scratch marks that could suggest for pruritus in chronic liver disease. Stat whether the umbilicus is inverted or inverted and look also look for spider nevi or dilated veins that could suggest for chronic liver disease. So if there is abdominal distension, determine the site of the distension, whether the distension is symmetrical or asymmetrical, and whether it is generalized or localized distension. So continue with palpation of the abdomen. Before palpating, we have to ask the patient whether there is any pain or not. And the examiner's position is also important. We have to sit on a chair or kneel beside the bed at the right side of the child and make sure the examiner's hands is at the level of the child's abdomen. So make sure the hands are warm before palpating because we don't want to shock the patient and also palpate with a relaxed hand. So we have to do light palpation, palpate the nine quadrants shown in this picture and look for any, feel for any tenderness, guarding or any palpable mass. After light palpation, we proceed to deep palpation, also check whether there is any palpable mass and if there is any mess, we have to describe the site, size, shape, consistency, whether it's firm or cystic or hard, and the mobility, whether it is mobile or not, tenderness, and also pulsatility if indicated. And other than light and deep palpation, we also have to palpate for the organs, including the liver, spleen, and the kidney. So for palpation of the liver, a normal liver may be palpable up to 2 cm below the right costal margin in infants or toddlers. And for the technique to palpate the liver, first we start palpating in the right iliac fossa of the patient and then we move upwards slowly during each exhalation of the patient. So we move slowly 1 cm by 1 cm upwards and then when we feel the liver edge with the radial aspect of our fingers shown in this picture here. Also take note to position the examining hand with the fingers parallel to the right costal margin and we pop it slowly towards the right costal margin to feel for the liver edge. So these are the possible findings of the liver. If <coughs> Once we pop it for the liver edge, we can start the position of the lower edge of the liver where we can say how many cm below the right costal margin at the mid-clavicular line. For example, the liver is palpable at 2 cm below the right costal margin at the mid-clavicular line. And like I said, normal liver may be palpable up to 2 cm below. So if more than 2 cm, it might suggest there's some hepatomegaly. So besides the position, we also have can describe whether the liver is smooth or nodular, whether
whether it's tender or not, and the liver edge is hard or firm. So that's for palpation of the liver. Next, we will palpate for the spleen. And for the technique, the examiner's left hand supports the child's left lower rib cage to push the spleen forwards. And for spleen, we also start palpating from the right iliac fossa, which is same with the liver palpation. So we start from the right iliac fossa, also place the radial aspect of the index finger over the right iliac fossa, and then during each exhalation of the child, we palpate upwards and move towards the left costal margin for the spleen, because the spleen is at the left side. And if there is any palp palpable spleen, we measure the lowest point of the spleen edge to the left costal margin. So shown in this picture here, the distance we have to measure for any splenomegaly is from the left costal margin at the left midclavicular point to the lowest point of the spleen edge. So this line over here. This is the distance we have to measure. And if the spleen is not palpable, we have to turn the child onto the right lateral decubitus position and repeat the palpation steps. So continue after palpation. So besides palpation for the liver and spleen, we also have to ballot for the kidney to check whether there is any ballotable kidney. And after palpation, we will continue with percussion. So percussion first for the liver. <coughs> so percussion for the liver. The indication is to define the upper border of the liver to exclude lung hyperinflation as the cause of a palpable liver edge below the right costal margin. And we percuss downwards from the third intercostal space. The normal upper liver border is at the sixth intercostal space at the right mid clavicular line. So this is only the reason we, if we want to percuss once we find out that there is more than 2 cm palpable liver below the right costal margin, it may suggest abnormal findings and we want to rule out lung hyperinflation that could be seen in some cases such as bronchiolitis and percussion can be done to check the upper border of the liver. A normal upper border will be at the 6th intercostal space. So if it is lower than that, it could suggest lung hyperinflation. And another reason we do percussion is for percussion of the spleen, the trap space of the spleen. In normal cases, it will be, the trap space will be resonant due to gas-filled stomach if down, it may suggest there is enlargement of the spleen, which is splenomegaly. There will be dullness on percussion of the trap space. So other than that, we also percuss to check for any ascites in the abdomen. And there are two tests that we can do. The first is the shifting dullness test. So with the child lying supine, we percuss the abdomen at the level of the umbilicus from the midline. And place our percussing fingers the fingers to be percussed, for example, our left hand is placed on the abdomen to be percussed and our right, right hand will be percussing. So our left fingers to be percussed are placed along the longitudinal axis of the child's abdomen. Percuss from the midline to the left flank and take note where the percussion node becomes dull. And keep the left hand at the place where we detect the dullness. Roll the child towards the right side, towards the examiner, and wait for more than 10 seconds. And then percuss again. If it is resonant, there is presence of ascites, evidenced by positive shifting downness. And then with the child still in the right decubitus position, we percuss back towards the midline. If the percussion not in the midline now becomes dull, then it is confirmed positive shifting downness. So you can see over this picture here, at first when the patient is supine, if there is acidic fluid, this is how the fluid looks like. And the upper part of the abdomen will be gas filled with the intestines. So that's why at first at the midline it is resonant, and then it will become dull at the flank where we are percussing on the fluid. So when the patient is rolled on one side, the fluid will go downwards. And the bowel loops will become at the upper side, which is at the flank. So that's why the downness will become resonant. And this suggests ascites. So other than that, we can also do fluid chill if there is massive ascites under tension when the abdomen is very distended. So 
we will ask the, an assistant or if the child is big enough, we can ask them to place their hand firmly at the midline of the abdomen in a longitudinal position. So shown in this picture here, the patient is asked to place his hand at the midline of his abdomen. And then the examiner will place, for example, place his left hand across the other side of the abdomen at the lumbar region and also the right hand will flick the abdominal wall on the other side, the opposite side. So if there is ascites present and flick through positive, the examiner will be able to feel the thrill on his left hand. So flick using right hand and then the left hand will feel the thrill opposite of the, at the other side of the abdomen. So this will be flick through positive, such as of massive ascites. So after percussion, we proceed to auscultation. And there are three points that we have to auscultate. And the two points will be for, um, the first point is the for the bowel sound. Normal bowel sound is heard every 10 to 20 seconds and it is considered absent bowel sound if it is not heard for two minutes. So the bowel sound can be auscultated at any point below the umbilicus, near the umbilical region, below the umbilicus. And Whereas the two other points will be to auscultate for the renal bridge, the left and right renal arteries. And where do we listen for the renal bridge? We auscultate at the side 1 to 2 cm above the umbilicus, slightly lateral to the midline for the left and right renal bridge. So there are three points, one for the bowel sound and two for the renal bridge. So that's all for the inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. And to end our examination, we can say that we want to complete examination by checking for any limb nodes in the leg, in the neck, any lymphadenopathy. And lastly, remember to thank the patient. That's all for this video. Thank you.